Hello Lizzie here and today I'm going to show you how to make Archie and Archie is a beautiful little wallet that opens up with a little snap fastener at the front there and it has room for six store cards it has a pocket just in there and it also has a zip pocket just here so you undo the zip and there's another pocket in there for your coins just get my hands in there and of course it all folds up beautifully flat with a little snap fastener now Archie is available as a download from my website lizzycurtis.com but the actual link is just down below in the description. Now for UK it's £3.50 a pattern and if you're in the US it's around about $4.24. Now if you're a gold member of my club then you will actually get three free patterns every month and Archie is, was actually one of those patterns. So if you want to join the Gold Club, you'll actually get this for free, or at least whatever's current in that particular month. So the first thing we need to do, obviously, is to go to the back of the, the patterns, the download that you'll get via email or from my Gold Members page, and you'll cut out all the pattern pieces. And now those, all of those pattern pieces will tell you how many you need to cut from each piece, whether it's cut on the fold, whether you need to put some stiffener in there. Now, um, if you're in the US, I've used Decaville and I've also used a cotton interfacing. I'm sorry, I don't know what your equivalents are, but I'm sure you'll be able to find out. It's a medium weight stiffener, the Decaville and the cotton interfacing just gives your cotton fabric a little bit more stiffness but not too much. So you're going to cut all the pieces out so let's just move Archie over there and let's try and go by the pattern itself that makes it so much easier doesn't it. So the first thing you need to do is to get your lining piece so that's the big piece so that's the big square and it's the plane. So this is your lining and you'll notice that the pattern actually has little notches at the side. You don't need to cut those out. Those are just a marker to where your pockets will go. So the first thing you need to do is to get your pockets and these are your store card pockets and you need to fold them over a quarter of an inch and then you just need to top stitch so they're nice and neat. And the first one you actually place down is the, the one that's nearest to the fold in the center. So it's not one, it's two, it's three. Um, because we need to stitch down that raw edge there to attach this pocket to your lining piece. So line up your pattern and you could use a clip or a pin just to hold this in place and where that little notch is there you'll be able to see that that's where you line up so literally I'm just going to pop that over the top and just um, clip it down and that'll go all the way across get it nice and straight and then all we're going to do there is stitch right across here and then we'll layer the other two pockets over the top by following that design on the on the pattern piece so let's just pop that out of the way try and keep tidy and let's just move the board out the way <clears throat> so you're literally just going from side to side um, about an eighth of an inch So now all we're going to do is to get our pattern piece again. Let me move this so you can see. And we've lined up that one on the, the V there. So this is our second pocket here. And I'm just going to pop that so it marries up with the pattern. So if I roughly place it and then line this up, you can see where that should go. So again, put a little clip there just to hold it in place. And then you're going to stitch again about an eighth of an inch. Just make sure those are nice and straight. We're going to stitch an eighth of an inch along there. Just making sure they are straight. I mean, do pop another quilting clip there. Stitch. 
So that's the third pocket, oh sorry, the second pocket in place. Now we're going to do the third pocket. And in actual fact, that just fits um, on the corners of your um, main lining piece. So you can see that it fits absolutely beautifully there. So in actual fact, now all I'm going to do is stay stitch all of these three layers all the way around. So I'll just bring in the machine. So I'll start from the top edge there. And because I'm going against the, the pockets and how they're set, just make sure they don't twist. Run along the bottom. And again, that stay stitching should be about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And then just cut your, your threads. So those are our pockets in place. We now need to do a centre seam. Now this is really easy because all you need to do is fold your wallet in half and just cut a little notch, just a little one, only going up to where you've just stitched. You don't want to go into the seam allowance. And where that notch is, just in the centre there, that's where we're going to stitch from. So we're going to stitch from there up to the top of those pockets and back down again. And that makes a really neat finish. Now, if you want to draw a line, So just beyond the fold of the pocket and then back down and try and stitch over those stitches again that you've just done. So when we look at it now, let's bring my board in so you can see it. You can see that all of our pockets are in place and we've got our stitching going through the middle that actually divides all the pockets up. Now we're going to put the zipped pocket in. So it's this piece here. So we've got two pieces to the pattern. We've got the inner pocket and the outer pocket. So um, they are both been cut on the fold. So I'll take my pattern pieces away now. So with the outer pocket, we need to have that so it's the wrong side facing down. And then with the inner pocket, the smaller piece, we're going to put it right sides down. So it's a, really it's right sides together. So the raw edge of my inner pocket is going up against the fold, the centre fold of the outer pocket. And um, just make sure it's a good half an inch on each side. Make sure it's, uh, it's well balanced. It won't make a huge amount of difference, but it's nice to have things balanced. So I've popped that raw edge just a wee bit below that fold line which is absolutely perfect. So now I'm going to pop a little, couple of pins in there just to hold it in place. There we go. So I know that's not going to wriggle now. And now we need to draw our lines to put our zip in. So from the raw edge of the inner pocket you're going to measure half an inch and you're going to draw a line. <clears throat> now this is done with a heat erasable pen but you could actually use an ordinary pen because you're not going to see this. So just make sure the next half an inch line you're going to actually draw is absolutely parallel to the last one. So we've done two lines, one half an inch down and the second one half an inch again. And then I'm going to do another line straight through the centre which is obviously a quarter of an inch. And then on each end I'm going to mark in a half an inch and I'm marking that half inch actually in the box itself. So let's just turn this around. So a half inch again from the outside edge of the fabric, which is there. There we go. And that's our perfect box. We also need to put the little V's in. Now these are about a quarter of an inch in. Um, you, you, you don't need to measure, but the, a quarter of an inch is a good guide as how much to come in with the little notches. So that's what that'll look like now. So what I'm going to do is actually stitch around that entire box. So ignore all the other lines other than that outside rectangle. And I'm going to stitch from one side, one little corner there, down, across, up and across the other line there. So just the rectangle. So 
Now you might want to think about changing to your zipper foot now. You also want to make sure that your needle goes in the corners perfectly. No need to do a back stitch because I'm going to go over those first couple of stitches again just to make sure that they're secure. So just come along that top edge and again just make sure that you're getting right into that corner and adjust, bring, you know, bring your foot up on your machine and adjust to make sure you are in that corner. It just will give a lovely neat finish to the corner of the the little box that we're making, the little opening. It just makes it a little neater. So down the other side and just come up to that corner again. Perfect. And then I'm just going to run off a couple of stitches over my original ones. Right, so take your pins out. We don't need those anymore. So all I'm going to do now is cut my little box open. Now I want you to have a look at this. So where that centre line is, that quarter of an inch line that we drew right through the middle, I'm going to cut there and I'm going to cut into my V's. Now I'm going to cut it. You just have a look at this. So a quick mention about my gold club. If you haven't joined already, there's no time like the present. Just pop to my website, find the link that says gold members sign up here and then you have access to my Facebook weekly events, which is absolutely amazing. My girls love it. And of course you get the free patterns as well. So if you want more information, there is actually a video on YouTube that you can have a little look at. So all I'm going to do is fold this in half. It's a bit like making a buttonhole in a way. And I'm just going to snip my lovely sharp scissors right through the center and then just cut. And I'm cutting right into the points, but not so far that I'm going to cut my stitches. So just, just be careful. And if anything, just be super careful, and super cautious, otherwise you're going to have to stitch it again. So just cut all the way through. I find this very satisfying because <laughs> the thing is, I know what the end result's going to look like. It's going to look so neat. So there we are. So I've cut all the way through. And if you can see at the ends there, I've cut those little V's as well. So now all I'm going to do is to pop this in a pocket through my letterbox and turn it right side out. So I've taken the inner pocket right through, so I've folded it through the letterbox. So when you look at it, this is the outer pocket now, and this is our piece of inner pocket that I've pushed through and I've given it an iron. A really good press at this point would be a good idea. You need to get those corners out beautifully, nice and straight for when you put your zip in. So the next stage is to put some uh, quilters tape on your zip. Now I'm using a fancy zip. There's no need for you to use a fancy zip. I just happen to have a big supply of them. Um, so your quilters tape goes on the very, very far edge of your zip. So um, it's the outer edge that you need to put that on because once we stitch it in you may well see the tape if you don't put it right to that edge. So I'll just cut that first little piece off. So I'm putting the tape right at the edge and it's, this is not a permanent fix. This is merely um, a help really to position your zip in the right place. So the quilter's tape goes down. Now my zip is cut to around about eight inches. It doesn't have to be quite as long as that, but I do like to have them a little bit longer and then I can cut them away. So it gives me a little bit of wriggle room, I suppose. So just make sure you get your zip slider out of the way and just cut the tape off. So just make sure that that zip tape is stuck really well. There we go. And then just peel it away to reveal the glue strip underneath. It's a great way 
of actually attaching a zip to anything by putting the tape on. There we go. So now what I want you to do is lay your zip down on your mat and I want to, you to place your letterbox, if you like, over the top. So it's the right size, so it's your outer pocket that you're looking at, not your inner pocket. So I'm going to look at it that way. That's what I want you to be looking at, that side. So I'm just placing it over the top. Now one end is going to be super easy because the zip teeth are closed together. So I'll place that end down first. There we go. Now you can see my zip is far too long, but I'm okay about that. And then I'm just following really the designs on my fancy zip and just making sure that's stuck down. You can see this side isn't so I just need to adjust that and bring that in so it's all the same both sides and just make sure obviously that your zip slider is inside the letterbox not outside otherwise you'll have to start again. Bring your teeth together just get your finger in there, just bring the teeth together and the same with this side, we'll just wriggle that over a little bit, there we go. I'm quite happy with that, I'm quite happy with that. So now what I'm going to do is pop it under my machine and I'm going to stitch all the way round. So it's like a top stitch. So I'm just going to stitch very, very closely to the edge of my box to actually hold the zip in place. Now, if you're using a metal zip, I want you to be really careful when you go over the teeth of that metal zip. So again, I'm going to start in one corner, get my zip slider well out of the way. So again, be careful going over the teeth. And again, I'm not doing a back stitch because sometimes you can see it and it looks a little ugly. Now I'm using a zip foot, so it means that I can easily get past that slider, okay? So down to the end, one more stitch, across the end, again go slowly, even with this semi-industrial machine you can hear it crunching through. <laughs> Adjust your needle so you're still quite near the edge of your enclosure and then just come down the other side. You should be able to get past that zip slider okay. Come up to that stitch that you started with, adjust if necessary, needle down and then just do a couple of little stitches and that's plenty to actually hold that zip in place. So now we've attached our fancy zip in there, obviously you can use any zip you like. I'm going to trim my zip away just a little bit. So both ends I'm just trimming away. We don't want to add unnecessary bulk. So that's what it looks like on the back. So what we're going to do now is we're going to lift up the bottom seam or the bottom edge of our inner pocket and bring it up to, to actually match the pocket that we've already just stitched down, the top part of the pocket there. So that's what you'll, it'll look like. So let me just put a couple of clips in there and you're actually going to stitch three sides. So the two short sides and the long side right near where you've put your zip. <coughs> okay, so you're going to stitch from this bottom edge here where the fold starts across the top and down. Now as you stitch all this together you need to move this outer pocket out of the way. We don't want to stitch this outer pocket at all. So. I'm just going to fold this back. You can see I folded that top pocket back. In fact, that's the, that's the wrong side. Let's start this side. So take my clip out. So again, I'm just folding that back. And it's about a quarter of an inch. Um, this part really doesn't matter so much. So quarter inch uh, is, is perfectly fine. 
you've got a half an inch all the way around to play with. So I'm lifting up my presser foot and I'm just going to keep my needle down. I'm going to swivel this around and as I do that I'm going to tuck the fabric underneath so it, I don't stitch it by mistake. So just get that raw edge of your inner pocket so you can see it, get all those edges lined up. So you've got, to, like I say, you've got about a quarter of an inch to the edge of that zip to play with. Sorry, half an inch. So right up to that corner. One more stitch. So again, pivot and turn, tuck that outer fabric out of the way so we don't stitch it. Keep the needle in because it really does help keep all your layers in place. And come down the other short side, little back stitch. And there we are. So there's our pocket now in place. Could do with a good iron, but that's in place now. And that's what it looks like on the back. So when we open up that zip, there's our little pocket that we've made. It's cool, isn't it? So now what you need to do is fold that in half. Now I like to stay stitch all these things down so they're nice and neat. So I'm going to bring in my original piece that we made just a little while ago. And I'm going to just give this a little iron so it stays put. Let's get all the gubbins out of the way. Like I say, I would prefer to press as I go but it's easier for me when I'm demonstrating is to have this little iron. So just give that a nice press. There we go. So what you're going to do is place the raw edges of your pocket to the outer corners of your wallet. So it all sits nicely like that. And I'm going to put clips in to hold. And I'm just going to stay stitch all of those layers together. Uh, so it's about an eighth of an inch all the way around. So I put the clips in and I then take them straight out again. Now I'm not using my big table today, but you can see how useful the big table would be for you if you have it attached to your machine, if you've got a, a nice table to use. So again, just going all the way around, like I say, about a quarter of an inch. It's just really to hold those layers in place. And you should be able to feel the bottom of your pocket, which is a, a good quarter of an inch away from the edge of your fabric. Again, up that short side. So that's stay stitched our pocket in place now. So our pocket looks like this. We've got the zippy part there and there's our store cards here. So that's great, isn't it? So we've got one more piece to do and that's to get our glorious piece of outer fabric. Um, we need to make a little tab as well. So I'll do that next. Um, and this is where we start attaching the main outer piece to the inner piece. So the first thing we need to do is to make that little tab. So a piece through, I think it's three inches by two inches. So I'll just measure this off. And this is to take your snap. Now the snap doesn't need to go onto the tab, but it will want to go on the outside of your pocket, of your wallet, sorry, before you put the whole thing together. So I've got a two and a half by three inch piece of fabric here. So I'm just going to finger press these and bring them into the middle. And in the instructions, it tells you exactly how to do this. And then while it's still on the machine, I'm just going to fold that quarter of an inch over at one end just to neaten it off. Just turn that around, quarter of an inch, fold it again. So that seam runs down the center of your tab. There we go. And 
that doesn't have any stabilizer at all it's just a nice uh, little tab that you can put in your wallet now this this needs to go on the front of your wallet so you need to decide where this where the front is going to be whether the front's this side or that side so now all we need to do is to actually put one half of the snap fastener into our outer piece of fabric so you want to measure one and three quarter inches from the outside edge and obviously halfway along which is four inches so I'll just put my ruler on one and three quarter inches here and then four inches is here and just make sure we're we're thereabouts with the the center point so that's where I need to make my hole so I'm going to make the hole I'm going to put the popper in and that makes sure that we'll be good to go when we actually stitch the whole thing together so I've put my hole through so the button goes on the inside of our fabric we don't want to see the button but we do want to put our other half of the snap fastener it doesn't really matter which half you put in but I'm going to put the socket in on the outside of your fabric and just wriggle your your little machine your tool here over the top just make sure that button is sitting into that silver dish and just give it a, a squeeze it shouldn't take a lot of pressure that should be absolutely perfect let's just get that lined up again there we go so that's in place beautifully We'll need that again when we do the tab, but that's right at the end. So now we've put our popper in place and that's now good to go. So we can now put right sides together with our, with our wallet. Now the popper needs to be on the opposite side of your tab. So your tab is there. So your popper, right sides down, needs to go over the top of the store cards. So pop that together. So don't forget to leave your turning gap. Now you, you may decide to put your turning gap somewhere else. Um, you've just got to consider that you've got to turn it over a quarter of an inch to hand stitch. So I'll just line everything up. Now I've cut my stiffener on my outer piece a quarter of an inch smaller, which means that it's, there's no bulk there in the seam. So there we are, that's laying nice and flat. So I'm just going to run that under the machine now. So I'm just going to start just nearly where those store cards are. Now because I've cut this um, a quarter of an inch smaller, it means I've got a bit of a guideline. So a nice back stitch to hold. Just make sure it's still lined up. And then you're just stitching all the way around. make sure it's still lined up I mean if you think anything is going to wriggle use your walking foot if you have one I always say to use it and I never do myself one more stitch <laughs> just going to do a little back stitch there to make sure that's secure just be, be aware that your tab needs to be in the right place take your clip out if you've got a clip there I actually stay stitch that in between and you can do the same so just make sure we're lined up needle down and turn and then like I say you want to leave a nice little gap I mean it's not too big a project to turn through nice back stitch to hold because obviously that's where the pressure is going to be now you do need to clip your corners back here and I would cut even a little bit more off so go across mind your stitches and also take a little bit off the bulk because you want fairly good points on your wallet so snip the corner and just take a little bit more of those seams and then we're going to turn through so where you've left that turning gap I know mean, that's quite small so we'll see how we get on but you want to um, I'm just going to undo that just a wee bit um, but you want to make sure that you've got enough to turn through because obviously um, you've got some stiffness in there you've got lots of layers in there as well so 
I should have done a little bit more of a back stitch, but never mind. So just pull that through. So it'll take a little while. And you could get hold of the corners, put your thumbs in there and push those through first if you want. And quite honestly, that really does help. Just make sure you're not putting your finger in the store card pockets. So again, just ease that through. So it will just take a little while. Okay, so I've turned it through. <laughs> There's my little turning gap there. So what I could do with is a really good steam so it looks beautiful. But I've got my outside snapper there. We need to put the other one on this side. So again, all you're going to do is I would fold your wallet in half like that. And bring your tab over just to make sure you know the position of where you're going to put your popper. And then obviously you can put the hole through and complete your project. So again, we'll just bring... So don't forget the button goes on the right side this time. So pop that through. Put the other half on. Pop it into our little tool here. Make sure that button is sitting nicely in the silver dish. Give it a twist just to make sure and then squeeze it. So there we are. So there's our popper in place. So that'll go in there nicely. Nice pop. There we go. It's nicely lined up. Um, and then we just need to hand stitch that finished. So that's it. That's our Archie wallet done. Obviously you can make changes to it if you wish. I like the idea of the pink and the lime green and the pop of colour on the outside. So I hope you've enjoyed watching the video and I hope you make loads.